Paul, so this technique of parallax, which is hard to do on Earth, but doable, now much better by going to telescopes in space, tells us the distances, that three-dimensional aspect to lots of stars, but there's more than that. If we look at a star, you, the different colors, that doesn't tell us through distance, right? Yes, we have another clue. One clue is distances, and yep. that allows us to work out how luminous a star is. The second is color. Now, we know to the naked eye, stars have rather faint colors. They, that, they by and large look pretty white, but you can just about see colors. That's right. I mean, in, in this classic image of Orion, you can notice that Betelgeuse is redder. These look a little bit bluer. As you said, not dramatic, but even my eye can notice that. Now, the reason why the colours aren't dramatic is partially because stars actually have rather pastel colours. Okay. But also it's because the human eye, here's a human eye, um, when the light comes in, it's brought to focus on the retina at the back yep. of your eye. Yep. And there are little receptors on the back that measure what you're seeing. Okay. Which then sends signal down the optic nerve. And goes into And we talked about these at length when talking That's about right. colour earlier. But it turns out there are two sorts of receptors. Okay. There are rods and there are cones. Now, why do we have two? Well, the rods are very good at low light level sensitivity. So they can see in the dark quite well, right? but they only see in black and white. So essentially they're, they're very good at just seeing something, but not really the detail, the color? Yeah, they don't see color so much. Yep. Well, you've got the, the cones, which see color, but they only work when the light is brighter. So you need a bright light to see lots of detail and color, but we can also see faint light, but just not a lot of detail in the color. That's right, so when we're out on a bright sunny day looking at the pretty flowers, we're using the the cones, and yep. so we can see colour. Ooh, pretty flower. And I guess if we were just looking at rods, the flowers wouldn't look pretty, and, well, we wouldn't be stopping to look at them. That's right, but when it gets very dim, the cones stop working, and we're left with the rods, okay. uh, which give us less detail. It's hard to read by rods, and they, but they only see black and white. Okay. And that's why when you're out by moonlight, it all appears ghostly and white. Mm. Actually, moon has the same spectrum as the sun, Yep, pickers. And so, in fact, a flower or the grass by moonlight has exactly the same colour as that flower or the grass by sunlight. So... It's just as... Yeah. The flower is just as red, the grass is just as green by moonlight, but they all look white. So, the, the, the type of light is the same, there's just less of it, and so we have a different part of our eye sensing it, and we don't see those beautiful colours as we would during the day. And in fact, your smartphone cameras have to deliberately, obviously the light level is low, therefore we have to make everything look black and white. Mm. So if they made it the true colour we pick up with a low light level sensor, it would look just as colourful as daytime. But it wouldn't look the special nighttime that we see. So just because we see it doesn't actually physically mean that's what's happening. In fact, a long time ago, they used to do, use this to make movies. They couldn't film at night, so they'd film during the day, and then they'd wash out the colours in post-processing to make it look all black and white, and people would think it's actually taken at night, but it actually been filmed in broad daylight in the sunshine. So one of the issues then with looking at the stars is actually less about astronomy and more about biology. Yes, 